I'm gonna go. Okay, so <laughs> my name is Elizabeth Phipps. I am the librarian at Young Women's Leadership Academy Primary and at Herf Elementary. And I wanted to talk about our research databases that we have in our class link and how I use them. It says research tools for all ages, but I really wanna show you how I use it with our littles, especially here at YLAP, they excel at um, using, the, using the databases even, um, even when they're still learning how to read because there's a lot of access, accessibility tools in the databases. So I just wanted to talk about me for a second. Um, I have my undergraduate in history and my master's in library sciences. I have two kids and another on the way. I love researching and learning new things. When I taught, I taught fifth and sixth grade ELAR and social studies. And then I'm currently in the pair, a paired librarian at my two schools. Um, I love doing research. I was always in the library with, for my history major. And then moving on from there, going into my master's in library sciences, like um, research was just like my jam. And I remember my very first research project that I did in elementary school, it was um, over Dr. Pepper. And we had to do it out of books, which is totally not the norm now. Um, and I can't even think of like how they would look up a book in my library today on Dr. Pepper. So we have our databases and they could look up Dr. Pepper through that. And I even remember going when I was little and seeing the bridge and seeing everything around in Waco. <laughs> So um, I'm going to show you the, um, how I use the databases, and then um, I'm going to go over some ideas, and then I want to hear y'all's ideas on how you use them, because maybe you've used them in a different way. And my ideas are mostly for like mini, uh, mini research, which is simple, low prep, like the kids show up that day, they have a whole lesson and all you need is where most of the schools are one-to-one -one now. So all you need is their computer that day. So, and some paper to write on. So we are going to class link and um, this should be a link right here, but if not, you can already have it open. Um, if you are from a different school, then um, you would use your databases. Is anybody from a different school? Or district. District. Where are you from? Northside. Northside. So yeah, y'all, y'all have databases. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It's like my my um the school that I used to teach at like did not have databases. So I was gonna be like, I have stuff for you. <laughs> um, so this is where um this is. Classic is where SAISD keeps all their stuff. So we would go to um, our databases, our library databases folder, and then we'd have them right here. The ones that I wanna look at today are going to be Britannica School and Gale. Britannica School on our end, I love it because it has the um, Britannica Escola. So it has um, the Spanish version too, because my one of my schools is dual language. So this has the same accessibility features and we use it a lot with the kids. And then Gail has, um, once you, Gail, you go on to, um, we'll do this one first. You click on Gail and it divides it up by elementary, middle school resources, middle and high school, and then you get into um, more higher academic. The ones we're gonna look at are elementary, but I wanna talk about National Geographic one. This one is awesome because you can get all the National Geographic publications through here. So you don't have like, we, we used to have the magazines that would come to the schools, but you don't even have to have magazines. You can go here and all the magazines are on here. So if they're looking up an animal, it's gonna be on here and it's gonna be through the magazine. They have their books, they have pictures and they, um, you can cite them 
they, it's easy to cite them. They have their source citation at the bottom. And then this one also has a listening feature. South American sea lion. A South American sea lion, Oteria baronia, swims among underwater plants, Aucus lenalos estatos. Enric Sala National Geographic Image Collection. South American sea lion. So in Gale, they have um, their accessibility feature is going to be how they can listen to it. They can change the my screen down a little bit. They have it leveled off, um, leveled, and it goes by the dots on the pages, and I will. I'll show you that. And then we have the tools in the top corner. So I'm gonna go to I'm gonna go back to our Gale homepage and go to elementary. Because this is the one I really want to talk about. So when I first introduce research to our littles. It's always close your eyes. What's your favorite animal? And then they automatically, they picture their favorite animal. And this makes it so simple for them to look up that animal. So the Gale Elementary, it's very kid friendly. I show them this and I go, where are we go? Where are we gonna find your animal? And automatically they're like that first one right here because it has a picture of an animal. Then from here, some stuff is a little bit, um, can get tricky, but some stuff can get a little bit tricky, but um, like when you get to animal related subjects or um, mammals, sometimes that one stops them for a little while. But the first thing I ask them is like, what's your favorite animal? And then if they say half the time, it's like a dolphin. So where would we find dolphin here? And they look at it and they're looking at it and they're like, oh, down here. I'm like, yes. Then they go straight through and they can find their favorite animal through the list. It's very picture driven. I love it. Then from here, they have their articles tiered. So there's level one, which Level one is gonna be simple sentences. It's gonna be easier to read for the kids. It's not gonna be very heavy. And if they're still need help with reading, they can listen to it. And it highlights and as it goes. Words to know, memorize, remember things, species, kinds. People often confuse dolphins and porpoises. They think they are the same. And then level two, the two dots. It's, um, the paragraphs get a little bit um, longer and there's a bit more information. And they can even, if they click up to three, it starts taking them to the middle school. No, when they click up to five, it takes them to the middle school articles. But the ones that I use with my kinder first and second are usually level one. Level one and then second grade, we're going to level two. Next, I wanna talk about Britannica and show you the accessibility features on Britannica. So on Britannica, it also is tiered a little bit different, but the kids totally understand this reference. I'm like, which one are you gonna click on? And they're like, the little one. I'm like, yep, you're gonna click on the little one, elementary. And then this one, the interface is totally kid-friendly too. And they've changed it up a little bit for summer. So like the kid, it's um, turned into almost like a site that they can go to to just explore on their own as well. Because these are, these are the top or new. <laughs> for this one, I 
want to talk about same thing it has pictures but the words are a little bit the words with the pictures um make it a little bit diff difficult if they're in kinder so like insects and arthropods they're they're going to struggle with that one mollusks they're going to struggle with that one i was trying to go through this as like with a pre-k kinder mind and i was like i got lost <laughs> um this one i mostly use for when we do research. So because it's Young Women's Leadership Academy primary, every March we do, um, our big thing is going over influential women. And um, so we look up, I have pulled every single book in my biography section. And then um, we look up influential women. I write them on the board and they pick from that list. So I'm gonna type in Jane Goodall. So as long as they have the name up on a board, they can copy it from there. They can find the matching one. They got it. And usually they know little, little things about the person. That's why they chose them. So if they know they got to the right place. This one, I liked the listening. So this is the same, sorry. My people are in the way. There we go. The same is leveled. It's leveled one and two. So same thing. This one, level two though, takes you to the middle school. So this gets a little bit more rich in, in information. But level one, it has the paragraphs. It tells you all about, um, they're not too hard to read and they're not too long. But what I love is that they do section it off. This one doesn't have it sectioned off, but you have a play the feature. British scientist Jane Goodall is known for her research on chimpanzees. She studied the animals for many years in the East African country of Tenth. So it highlights the whole entire sentence for you, then reads the sentence. And when you look up another person, let me look up another person. You know, yep, I remember who it was. There we go. So it chunks the information into sections. So when I found, um, told the kids that they needed to talk about her early life, where was she born? So like they're doing like little mini biographies because they're going to teach us about them. And then it has, Ruby it's sectioned Bridges off. Was born on September 8th, 1954. And, and it has a listening for each one of those sections. So it chunks the information for them. So it's not overwhelming. And they're not having to listen to this whole entire thing. Because if they listen to the whole thing, they're going to tune out. So this, I really like, um, really like this one. And this is when I had the kids choose, um, ch choose between all of them. Ruby Bridges was the one they gave me the best information back about. Trying to bring my screen down again. There we go. So that was the, um, those are the accessibility features that I really like using with my kinder and little, my little ones that struggle with reading. But I love both of those sites a whole lot, along with um, when they get a little bit older using the, um, using National Geographic, my favorite. I introduced it to the kids once and they um, told them, I was like, find something random, find something random on there. So they all went through and they, the one that they got stuck on was um, that they're that somewhere in Asia, they make crab ice cream and um, they, they, they couldn't get past it. So they all watched the video about crab ice cream. So next, I just wanted to talk about some ideas that I had um, for many research ideas because library, we only get like 45 minutes with the kids weekly, every other week. Um, and 
So mini research is the best. And I used to do this with my, uh, when I was teaching too, because getting all the kids day to day to think about, um, do a project over a long term with, um, when I was at my, um, my old school was, it was hit or miss. We weren't gonna bring the materials every day. We weren't gonna work on it. So mini research is where it's at. Um, so how I introduce a good, good fun things to introduce databases to the kids would be, this one's my favorite because you're also working on persuasive text is um, you, please, can I have, mommy, please, can I have, daddy, please, can I have, um, and they have, they learn all about the pet that they want, where does it live, what does it eat, how do I care for it, and then they have, um, how would it be a good fit for my family, and then they have to persuade, they get up and talk, and they have to persuade you, like, you're their parent, and why you need that, because that's what I used to do when I was little, I would be at the library every day reading about hamsters because I wanted a hamster. And then after that, it was guinea pigs, reading about guinea pigs nonstop. So then I could tell my mom all the useless guinea pig facts to show that I knew what I, I, I knew how to take care of it. <laughs> so I like, I love this idea. Um, then they, um, especially, especially because they have to think, they have to like think about how would they convince their parents what are all the pieces that you need? This one, um, exactly how I do it here at YLab is, um, like I said earlier, close your eyes and picture your favorite animal. And then um, from there to make it a group effort and to get them to start talking together because I, I told the kids this year, and I'm gonna continue this, is like everything we do in the library is gonna be a group project everything we do is group related because they were in COVID for two years they work by themselves we are doing things together we're learning how to work with a partner we're learning how to work with a group so share your favorite animal with your table and see if anybody has the same animal if you do have somebody at your table that has the same animal then you partner up if not then you branch out to the other tables and you find somebody that has the same animal as you and then um from there they find a picture of their animal and they're going to cite it. And I love on Lumio the pictures that you use. If you guys can see this picture that you use, it cites them for you. So that was super awesome. So if you use Lumio, that is less work for your kids, but then they're still learning how to cite because you talk about how that, um, how that picture is there. Um, and then you write down three facts that you learned about your animals. And that's super simple, quick and easy. And then at the end, they teach the class about their animal. And then this one is the one that I talked about earlier and it's inspirational people through history. So when you're using Britannica, um, September is National Hispanic Heritage Month. February is Black History Month. March is International Women's Month. May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. You have, um, I'm, I typed that up fast. I wonder if I'm missing anything. But there's all these months where you can look up influential people, learn about different cultures, and um, and the kids will get in small groups, one to two, they, and then have a list of names on the board. Or they, if they already know of one, they could totally use that one instead. Um, and then they, their groups look up information about their person and here we use the two column AVID Cornell notes. So they're using that all throughout from like kindergarten up. So by the time that I walk into the second grade class, like they're using them flawlessly and it's beautiful. <laughs> um, so they, they take notes on the AVID Cornell notes. And then at the end, they teach us about their person. Sorry, I'm sweating, it's hot in here. They turn the AC off. <laughs> And then here is where I, why I have the Lumio on is um, what ideas do y'all have or how have y'all used the databases for your school or for our, from our databases? And you can tell me through here.
So when you're using this, you type into the box and then you hit um, the blue. And I think I gave you five responses if you really wanna give me five responses. But you don't have to. Or if you wanna share it out, that's cool too. Cause I don't like being the only person talking. Yeah, you can share it in the chat or Lumio. Great, I see someone. So I like Nat Geo for pictures as a start to research, show them a photograph and help them develop researchable questions that, yeah, yeah. I have the kids research animals, but they don't use these sites. They are much better with the immersive reader. I can't get it to load, but we use Pebble Go to do like informational text. Pebble Go? Uh-huh. And I've then we used it to do a little video at the end with slides in Flipgrid. Oh yeah. So there was um, at our training, uh, right before our summer break, our short summer break last year. Um, they showed us how the kids used chatter picks and they did research on their animal and then they spoke as their animal and, um, and then presented it that way. And it was so cool <laughs> to research about countries. Yes, yes. I loved researching about other countries and then uh, bringing food in they, when you were younger and they used to let you bring food in. <laughs> um, what else was there? To go back with um, research, developing researchable questions, I'm gonna show you my another favorite thing about Gail on the the way they celebrate holidays. Yes, yes. On Gale, they have already made research researchable questions and I'm trying to develop a lesson on how to use that. Like I've made everything for it. I just like logistically can't figure out how to put, how to get the kids to do it. <laughs> I think Lumio might be easier to use. I was trying to use a Jamboard and it wasn't working. Um, I don't want to click away because I don't want it to mess up y'all's. I wonder if I can just open a new tab. So on Gail. they have their I wonder questions. It's I wonder, what is an example of an invertebrate animal? And then they find, they take some strength to what is an invertebrate and they learn about it. But the way that I was gonna do it was I was gonna have them click until they found something that they really wanted to learn about. And then from there, we'd share our favorite questions and what we learned about it. So that's how I've been wanting to use the I wonder for a lesson with the kids. Did anybody else wanna share? Or is anybody typing? So another mini research project that I did when um, I was teaching uh, sixth grade 
was career readiness and the kids all wrote their favorite um their favorite careers on the board and then from there they picked they picked the career off the board because some some friends came up with a cooler career than they could think of so they picked a career off the board and they got in little groups and then we use news ela which is not in our in our databases but you have to um, sign up for it it's free i loved it so this is all news articles and they have a very they have a big selection of careers and you can do it assignments um, for your class so you can set it up for your class to already have assignments and news articles to get them that way too but I use this in my ELAR class a lot with my older kids, with my fifth and sixth graders. Browse, search, let's do this. So I typed in jobs first. And they have a whole um, text set of dream jobs. Java, the president, Mars explorer and engineer, meteorologist. There was even like, so like these probably aren't ones that kids would come up with like right away, but even had the ones that the kids loved. So like YouTuber was a big one I got when I was teaching. <laughs> I want to be a YouTuber. Like, okay, so let's learn about it. And then afterwards they'd be like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Where did you find the new ZLA? I missed that. Yeah, so um, I it's not in our databases. It's actually just a website that I've used in the past. It's um, newsela.com. Okay, because I know it's on our class, on our uh, Canvas, I've seen it there. Yes, yes, it is, okay. it is. And you just sign up with your, um, with your school Google, Google is how I've used it. So I just use my school Google. And then you can set up your classes and give them assignments. When we first went into um, distance learning, I was using this with the kids. But their text sets were the ones that I really liked. Trying and they've changed the website since I've used it. <laughs> Type in text set. Nope. But yeah, so that's how I've used that one in the past. And that was going to be the one if, if anybody didn't work, um, didn't work at like a school that didn't have um, databases, because my um, the charter school that I used to be at, they, it was tiny, no database, no databases. I was like having to find ways to get the kids to research. I tried to find it on the public library too from school and that there was too much information. <laughs> Back here. Okay, so that is about what I had. Um, short and sweet. You're a little early to be done. Um, but I hope you learned something new. And I really, um, I can't, I will have every, and if you come up with any ideas, like totally share them. Um, my, share them with everybody around you because I love, I love sharing ideas. Um, I was gonna say you could share them with me, but I didn't put my email up there. It's e p h i p p s one at s a i s d dot net. Um, and if I love coming up with new ideas, so if you ever want an idea, I love brainstorming and figuring things out. So if you ever need help, just let me know. <laughs> Perhaps you can add your email in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. I love how you use your how you did your your presentation in Lumio. So the entire thing flows in Lumio. 
where you can use all the tools on the side. Yeah, yeah. I've been, um, my favorite part about Lumio is that the kids can upload with pictures. So we did dot day and they found dots. They found anything um, circle related in the library. Um, we did an egg hunt with Lumio where they had to go around and um, take pictures and whoever found the most eggs, they got a prize, but really everybody got a prize, so. Cool. And you can access all those uh, research uh, tools in both Chromebooks and iPads, right? Yes, yeah, because it's in our um, it's in our class link. So um, all of them, I've had them all work on the on the iPads and on on the Chromebooks. Here at at YLAP, they only our third graders have the Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. So everybody else is on the iPad. Cool, very nice. But that's it. You um. As soon as they fill out the sign-in sheet, y'all are good to go if you are ready.